Hey guys, here are your quick five questions for AQA Physics Forces. Um, this is an excellent topic, but there are quite a lot of questions. So if you want to fill them in as we're going along, pop over to my website where you can get the free version guide. To find scalar quantity, a scalar quantity is just a number. Whereas a vector quantity is a number with direction. A contact force is when something affects the force, so something so pushing, another body affecting the force, so push. Whereas a non-contact force is um, applied around, and the most common one is going to be weight. Resultant force is going to be force going in this direction and force going in that direction, so the sum of forces. That could be up, down, that could be positive, negative, forces going in different directions. Mass and weight are different. Your mass stays the same, whereas your weight is dependent on gravity. So if you go to the moon, your mass will stay the same, but since gravity is about one-tenth of the um, gravity on Earth, you're going to have about one-tenth of the weight. The equation linking weight, mass and gravity is weight equals mass times gravity. The units for weight are measured in newtons, mass is measured in kilograms, and gravity is 9.8 one newtons per kilogram. What is the equation linking work, force and distance? Work equals force times distance. I know this is another W, work and weight, both Ws. I'm afraid this is just one of the awkward quirks of physics. If I could change it for you, I would, but I can't. The units for work are joules, the units of force, again, are newtons, and the units for distance are metres. They are the same. There is a one-to-one -one ratio. So one joule equals one newton metre. With an elastic object, up to the limit of proportionality is going to keep extending. When it reaches limit of proportionality, no matter how much force you exert on it, it is not going to extend any further. The equation linking force to spring constant extension is force equals the spring constant times extension. The units of force again, because they're so important, I'm going to keep repeating this as many times as you need, are newtons. The units for the spring constant are newtons per metre, and the units for extensions are metres. What is the equation linking elastic potential energy, the spring constant and extension? That is... Elastic potential energy equals half the spring constant extension squared. The units for elastic potential energy, the same as any type of energy, joules. The units for the spring constant, again, newtons per metre. These are so important. And the units for extension are metres. A fluid is a liquid or a gas. Liquids cannot be compressed, whereas gases can. The equation linking pressure, force and area is pressure equals force over area. The units of pressure are pascals, the units of force, so important again, Newtons, and this has to be a capital N. A lowercase n is incorrect and will not get you the marks, I'm afraid. The units for area are meters squared. Uh, distance is a scalar quantity. Displacement is a vector quantity. Speed is a scalar quantity, whereas velocity is a vector quantity. What is the equation linking distance, velocity and time? I'm afraid you're not going to like this one because distance here is S. 
velocity times time. Distance equals velocity times time. The units for distance are metres, the units for velocity are metres per second, and the units for time are seconds. From a distance time graph, you can calculate the speed of an object by looking at the gradient of the line. An object can have a constant speed but still be accelerating if it is changing direction, for example if it's going in a circle. You can calculate distance travelled from a velocity time graph by looking at the area under the graph. So here we have a triangle, so that is going to be half base times height. And in this bit here we have a rectangle, so that one equals base times height. If we had another section on here, we would have a triangle on top of a rectangle. So you would have to do for this bit, half base times height, and height being from there to there, not height of the whole thing, which is a common mistake people make. And for this bit, base times height, and height being from there to there. Um, acceleration from a velocity time graph is the gradient. The definition of acceleration is change in velocity over time. The equation linking acceleration, change in velocity and time is acceleration equals change in, that's what that triangle means, it's the capital delta, so delta velocity over time. The units for acceleration are metres per second squared, the units for change in velocity are metres per second, the units for time are seconds. The equation linking final velocity, initial velocity, acceleration and distance is final velocity squared minus initial velocity squared is equal to 2 times acceleration times distance. If an object is falling due to gravity, what acceleration does it have? That is 9.8, which is the value for gravity, and then the units of acceleration, metres per second squared. Terminal velocity is the speed or velocity something is travelling at when all forces on it are equal. An object that has zero resultant force in it can either be doing two things. If it is stationary, then it is not moving. If it is already moving, then it is going to be moving at a constant speed. Newton's first law says that an object will stay stationary or at a constant velocity unless acted on by external forces. Inertia is where something keeps doing what it's doing unless acted on by external forces.
What are the units of force? That is newtons. What is the equation linking force, mass and acceleration? Force equals mass times acceleration. The units for mass are kilograms. The units for acceleration are metres per second squared. Stopping distance is thinking distance. Or reaction time plus braking distance. It's the time from when you see, for example, if you're driving a car, from the time when you see an object in the middle of the road to when your car actually stops. Two factors that can affect reaction time, that can be uh, drinking alcohol, drugs, tiredness. And don't forget to say where this could have a positive or a negative effect. It is not just enough to say that drugs have a negative effect, because some drugs, some illegal drugs, are going to have a negative effect, makes you feel very drowsy, whereas caffeine is a drug and will actually increase your reaction time. Two factors that can affect braking distance can be the weight of the car, the condition of the road, the tyres, And again, be really clear whether this is going to have a negative or a positive effect. When we're talking about floating or sinking, we need to be looking at the density and the surface area. Pressure is equal to height times density, which is rho. I know it looks like a P, but it's not a P, it's a lowercase rho. Again, I'm really sorry if I could change this for you, I would, but I can't because I'm not in charge of physics. Times gravitational field strength. And gravitational field strength, remember, is 9.8. The units for pressure are pascals. The units for height are metres. The units for density are kilograms per metres cubed. Uh, the units in value, value for gravitational field strength are 9.8 newtons per kilogram. The law of conservation of momentum is that momentum has to be conserved. So if you're doing momentum calculations, remember your momentum before must equal your momentum afterwards. You cannot lose it anywhere. The equation linking momentum, mass and velocity is momentum. And I know you think I'm messing with you here because I've just written a third P on the page and it's standing for something completely different. I'm sorry, again, if I could change physics for you, I would, but I can't. Momentum equals mass times velocity. The units for momentum are Kilogram, space, metres per second. I know it's really tempting to write kilograms per metres per second, but that is wrong. It is kilograms and then a clear space, metres per second. The units for mass are kilograms. The units for velocity are metres per second. Moment is equal to force times distance. The units for moment are... Newton meters, force newtons, the units for distance are meters. If um, an object has balanced clockwise and anti clockwise forces, then it's going to remain balanced, nothing is going to happen. If your clockwise and anti clockwise forces are unbalanced, you're going to have a turning effect, it's going to be moving. What is the equation linking velocity, force, changing velocity and changing time? The equation for that is force equals mass times change in, remember delta means change in, change in velocity over change in time.